Ameripride is a fourth generation business providing linen service, uniforms and apparel, floor mats, restroom products and other services to nearly 150,000 customers every week. It operates 45 plants and 70 service centers throughout the United States and Canada. While that may sound awfully spread out, it's second nature for this 122 year old business. Back in 1889, shortly after George Steiner bought a local laundry in Lincoln, Nebraska, he partnered up with Brother Frank to grow the business, and this soon meant expanding into other markets. I think the sort of working relationship that the two founders created, because they never lived in the same city after they first got the business going, they were always separate, but they always somehow seemed to sort of support and uh, work together very effectively as they sort of built the business over the years. I think part of their collaboration translated into how they worked with the people that they hired. Certainly in the first 50 years, each of the businesses that they created was a separate corporation. The employees in that branch, the manager, would be clearly a shareholder of that corporate entity. So there was an ownership sort of stake in each of the specific locations. Things began to change in the 1940s and 50s. In order to obtain financing for growth, Ameripride needed to consolidate its separate businesses under one legal corporate name. The family made the transition carefully making sure its spread out network of local managers and co-owners felt they were being treated fairly. Another challenge then arose as the company began to acquire additional operations. How could it maintain its culture and the family values that had helped it succeed for more than 50 years while assimilating other businesses and cultures into its own. The vast majority of the acquisitions that were made were also family businesses. A lot of times the values were somewhat similar. The other thing that happened you know, in those days was that if the company made an acquisition, that particular company would be probably been in that community for 50 years or whatever, it was well known. You know, we didn't change the name, so we had a whole variety of names and we felt like we wanted to change as little as possible when we went in and you know, made acquisitions. This too eventually changed when the company decided to rebrand itself across the board as Ameripride in the year 2000. The biggest thing I remember about that name change was with American Linen and, and it was the fact that we had been here you know, in the Minneapolis area so long. I remember one situation that was with, uh, it, was a fair, it was a large account that we'd been servicing for years. The contract came up you know, for renewal, and we had to bid like everybody else. Without really thinking about it, we put in the bid as Ameripride as opposed to American Linen, and, uh, you know, so they went through the bids and, you know, looked at them, and who's this Ameripride? I'd never heard of them before, you know, and so we ended up not getting a new contract because they didn't know who we were. Yeah. <laughs> Another challenge, succession. Seven family members are actively involved in Ameripride's business. Five of them serve on the board of directors, two have active roles in the company. Other family members are shareholders and have limited involvement. But when Bruce Steiner prepared to retire a few years back, no family member was yet ready to take his place. The company conducted a long search and interview process and found Bill Evans, who had held executive positions at Pepsi Americas. There was reluctance from some family members to take this step, but they all realized it was simply one more instance in which they needed to adjust to changing times in a way that would be best for the business. I think we've gotten over the leadership part where you can have an outside CEO, but you have to have knowledgeable family members that are employed or that are very you know, engaged in the business. And I think it's necessary to have family members like that that also are advocates and are communicating what's going on to the rest of the family members to keep the interest and, and keep people connected.